A lot of you might be feeling like you're standing in deep shift. But do you know what grows and rises out of deep shift? Opportunity. To successfully navigate the shift to the new normal, each of us must learn to rapidly adapt to the speed of change. Some of us are hardwired for this. Others, not so much. That's where Success Performance Solutions can help. Success Performance Solutions is now your AQ headquarters. Whether you are personally struggling with the next chapter in your career or wondering how ready your team is for fast, disruptive change, our AQ assessment and coaching will provide you a detailed, scientifically backed roadmap to guide you into the new normal. Optimize your adaptability today. Contact Success Performance Solutions about evaluating your team's change readiness or joining our upcoming AQ Masterclass. Visit SuccessPerformanceSolutions.com or call us at 800-803-4303. Hello, Ed, and uh, that, that was a heck of a, uh, a welcome we had. So apologize to anybody who's uh, watching live. Uh, we're a few minutes late. We had a little difficulty in the beginning. Uh, we're not sure why, but uh, we were adaptable. So right. uh, I think that was a perfect uh, introduction. And uh, again, so just a heads up, uh, we are here for our monthly Gordon report. Uh, we've gone live. Uh, this is the second time we've done this. Uh, Ed Gordon uh, from the Imperial uh, Group had, or Imperial Consulting uh, has been issuing this uh, uh, newsletter, I guess, a, a report, the Gordon right. report, uh, right. frequently, periodically for over for 10 years uh, yeah. or more. And uh, we decided to, to take this live, do more frequent updates, especially with the pandemic and how fast the world is changing. So uh, excited to have Ed here. Uh, you. As, you, as you just heard the commercial about Adaptability Quotient, uh, it's a new service that we're now offering uh, through a group that we've partnered with. Uh, we are now offering the Adaptability Quotient Assessment. Uh, we've got a masterclass uh, coming up. I'm going to scroll uh, just in a few minutes. I'll scroll the website that you can go to. Hopefully you're going to join, but we certainly are living in a world that we need to be adaptable as indicated by how we started the, the show uh, where we have a technical glitch and we all got to do things on the fly. So Ed, welcome back. I know we're going to talk you. about this month. We're going to be talking about the unemployment and underemployment uh, in the pandemic. You've been predicting this despite the um, whether we had a pandemic or not, we, 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 we've been talking about, uh, you've been talking about especially, and I've been on your writing your coattails for a while, uh, about the uh, unemployment, lack of uh, how skills were going to change, uh, how millions and millions of people were going to be, uh, lack the skills that we we're going to need for the future, and how few people were going to be that had the schools, skills to go forward. So let's start out with uh, we kind of a real issue is because we just yesterday we heard the numbers again. The stock market yeah. when it goes up, it goes down. Uh, eight, I think it was 850 some thousand people filed for unemployment claims. It was a slight dip, dip, but it's certainly yeah. substantially more than it was. So overall, we rely on those numbers. It, it forces our economy up and down. It gives us uh, kind of an indication of optimism or pessimism about our future. But how accurate are those numbers? Well, let's take a look at the September unemployment report that the Bureau of Labor Statistics issued. The official number of unemployed people in the United States is right now 12 and a half million. And the official unemployment rate is 7.9%. However, 
for a long time, and now this has increased, you have a number of people that have given up looking. The labor force has actually been shrinking for a while. Right now, we have over 100 million people who are no longer in the labor force. They're not counted in these, these reports. Now, we'll take half of those people and say they're retired. That's probably not quite accurate. I think it's a little less than half. But we'll say that 50 million people are, not, uh, are, are, are now retired and they don't want to work. Of those 50 million people, we estimate that at least half of them, 25 million of them, are trainable people. In other words, they have unlearned things, they have relearned new things, and they are adaptable, and they are willing to be employed. The biggest problem has been that American business doesn't want to train anyone, or very seldom do they have training programs to offer to fill new jobs. For every dollar our foreign competitors spend on training and education of their employees, American business spends 20 cents, all right? Mm -hmm. Now there are certainly companies that do this. Boeing and others do training. So uh, how many trainable workers are there out there? Well, there are about 25 million people who would like to be trained and work and they've given up looking and they're angry. And then you have another 12 and a half million that supposedly are looking for jobs. That gives you a total pool of about 38 million people in the United States who would like to work. So the real unemployment rate, as far as I'm concerned, is not 7.9%, it's 23%. Mm -hmm. And that explains some of the anger, the uncertainty, the panic, some of the uh, rioting that we've seen over the past uh, uh, few months in our major cities. I'll give you an example, though, of what I'm saying. Right now, according to Jolts, we have about six and a half to seven million vacant jobs across the United States. Now, let's just look at that, a microcosm of that. One of the things is uh, the Wall Street Journal on October 14th headline, COVID testing labs face staff shortages. Well, I've been tracing this since the COVID crisis started. We had a shortage of lab techs at the beginning of the crisis. Now we have a much bigger shortage. Well, why is that? Well, um, how many people even think about becoming a lab technician as a career? Not that many, not until they get a little older. And by then, did they have the math and science and high school and elementary school to do it? So right now you have a chronic shortage of lab technicians. Well, now here is another uh, headline, and this is from the Financial Times. It talks about the shortage of doctors in Central Europe and how many of them have left to go to other parts of Europe. Well, now the French this past week, now they're almost in a national lockdown again because of the virus. Mm -hmm. And they're screaming, we need more doctors and nurses at the government. And the government is screaming back at them, we don't have any more doctors and nurses to deploy. There is a chronic shortage. And in the US, we have the same problem. We have a shortage of nurses and doctors. Well, now, uh, all right, what is business doing about this? So, so Ed, let me just stop you there for a second. Yeah. I, I'm, across the bottom, I've got the job openings and labor turnover summary. Okay. You mentioned Jolts before. Not everybody is probably familiar with what the Jolts survey is. So right. um, I, I'm not going to put the link in there because it's, it's pretty long. But uh, anybody who's interested in, in how many job openings and what the labor turnover rate was as recently as September uh, can go up to uh, just in, go into Google or whatever other search engine you use, type job openings and labor turnover summary, and uh, you'll be able to see that. what uh, Ed was talking about. So, And when we were going into this, it was uh, the jolts in January and February was around 7 million, and uh, Imperial, uh, our research showed that we really had about 10 and a half million vacant jobs at that particular moment. Now, Drop in the bucket is, now. <laughs> yeah, well, right. So now, what are, what are some companies doing about this? Well, now we've been talking and Ira has been talking a lot about all the online new training that's going on. And that is very important.
However, I'm happy to tell you that IBM, AT&T, and some of the other larger corporations has done an unprecedented thing. In the 1990s, they set up corporate universities. It was part of a book uh, called The Fifth Discipline, where Senge, Peter Senge, talked about the learning organization and investing in human capital. Uh, Imperial Consulting set up many corporate universities here in the Chicago area for companies. They all died out. I'm happy to tell you now they're coming back. And the reason they're coming back is very simple. For every vacant jobs companies have, they lose on average $24,000 in lost profit and productivity. So do you invest now or not? Well, companies are investing. I'm also happy to tell you that apprenticeship education is now on the rise once again, where companies are sponsoring apprenticeship programs with community colleges or through labor unions or on their own. And the reason why we have severe shortages of people like lab technicians who do not require a four-year college degree, mm -hmm. but they do need a certificate or a two-year degree. Again, the question is, do we invest now or later? Companies have been still heavily buying back stock, using merger and acquisition to buy up other companies. I have news for you. We can't, the, the shortage of talent now is at an all time high and it is due to go higher unless we unlearn what corporate America has been doing. And I also tell parents who are listening, and most of you are parents or grandparents, unless more Americans get the idea that homework and overlearning and doing well in school is very important. Is it as important as football, soccer, uh, mm -hmm playing video games, uh, it probably is more important because now only a third of our kids coming out of high school read and have comprehension at the 12th grade level. And most of the jobs, good paying jobs, and this is for black, Hispanic, white parents, everyone require at least that as a foundation for problem solving and thinking skills. That what, that's what companies want. So what I predict is going to happen in this decade we will change those habits through these regional talent innovation networks that I've written about in future jobs and in other publications I've written in, in past years. If we don't, and the white paper job shock, which we will issue in early 2021, basically says the U.S. economy is due to shrink by $4 trillion a year in GDP, because many of the jobs we have now in technology, the leading cutting edge stuff will go to other countries simply because we do not have the workforce to do the work. Uh, I can already tell you that uh, on a small scale, what happened to us just recently, we have a very reliable printer, fax, copier, scanner, et cetera, which we've loved for years. I won't tell you the brand, but that brand uh, is uh, a foreign uh, uh, brand, obviously, most of them are now, they're leaving the US. They're only going to have market in Europe and Asia. And we asked our supplier, well, why? Well, I'll tell you why. We have such a severe shortage of small machine repair people that they can no longer cross the United States, provide proper service to their equipment. So they're just leaving the US. And that's going to happen more and more. This is not a political commercial. This is not a educated versus uneducated people commercial. This is not a commercial against the American capitalist system. This is a warning to business to invest in their workers and parents to make sure their children get a better basic education and have a better idea of what they want to do as a, in a career after they leave high school. So uh, I think that pretty well covers how accurate our unemployment figures are. I think there's more to it. And hopefully we're going to see a business trend that Ira and Ed and a lot of other people are going to help companies and parents better prepare their kids for work and retrain, unlearn and then relearn new things and keep that process going in, in corporate America. 
So where do you, where do we go from here? I mean, I, I, again, I, the, the, we obviously need a lot of initiatives, wh whether it's retain or 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 different forms of retains. Yes. Um, we it, it's beyond just parents. I mean, parents are, are especially during the pandemic are doing their best. Uh, yeah. Education is really struggling. Uh, both uh, certainly not prepared. Uh, you know, they they expected that the traditional classroom. Um, Busing, get people to school, get them home. Yes. Uh, all that process was going to stay the same, and all of a sudden it got disrupted. And yes. the longer we remain in this, the longer it that will be the new norm. Yep. Uh, and now they're behind the eight ball because yep. again, uh, more so well-to-do socio and economic areas, depending on the area of the country you live, depending on the bandwidth that you live, uh, it, it, it's there's easier access to some of this. But sometimes yep. even the most basic fundamental of we can give somebody a computer but if they don't have access to the internet it doesn't yeah. really matter right uh, so we've got a long way to go how have you seen i, I guess the business response to this what what uh, on a, a kind of a more short short term because we are we got a long-term problem but what's been right. what what how have you seen businesses respond well uh first of all businesses that can send workers home to work at home are doing it. But now the issue has become, our business is going to help set up a office in people's homes. Are they gonna provide the equipment mm -hmm. to do that? But more importantly, let's talk about the effect that this COVID has had on business and education. First, let's deal with business. Right now, the COVID epidemic is going into its second wave. I have, I'm doing a radio series here in Chicago on the pandemic. Uh, the numbers in Illinois, particularly outside the city, are rising. I have a message for everyone listening. This is a message uh, from uh, a historian and business leader, myself, uh, to all the, the people watching uh, uh, today. If we want this pandemic, this life and death issue to end, we need to encourage people, young and old, to wear their masks and socially distance and do everything in their power to end this. The sooner we do that, the sooner the rates will go down. The more restaurants can remain open, the more children can actually go to school. If we don't do this, we could have 400,000 dead in this country by Christmas. I want you to understand that I say this now as someone who spends a great deal of time monitoring this in conditions around the world and talking to people around the world, small business people, doctors who are involved in this epidemic, business leaders, political leaders. This is not a political commercial. I'm not, I am totally nonpartisan in what I'm doing. But I can tell you now that if we, you know, there are 2.3 million people in restaurants who have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. Now they're struggling here in Chicago to reopen. Uh, my, the club I belong to, which is an arts club, the Cliff Dwellers, we have a limited opening. Tonight we're doing a little fundraising event because we've been raising money to keep our staff. And we have, we hope about 25 people, which is the limit to come. We fear, as other businesses fear, that we will have to shut down completely. We don't want to lose those people, the, the chef, the manager, the, the other workers who've worked for us for many years. So the steps we're taking are try to raise money to keep their mm -hmm. salaries going and hopefully getting some government money as well. But for the airlines, for all these public service industries, we have to take the precautions that we know work until we get the vaccine. And I agree with most of the experts I read, it'll be to the middle of next year before most people will have access to a reliable vaccine for workers and some of the older people are challenged. They may get the vaccine sooner. This is what we can do as leaders in our communities, as parents, as 
people in their 20s and 30s. This is life or death. Mm -hmm. This is not a political statement. And it's also important for the economy of the United States. If we have 400,000 dead or more, what impact will that have on our economy? What impact will that have on the morale of our people and our families who will be grieving over the, the people? I've just had a good friend of mine who just died. He was older, but he was a good friend of mine, a real education leader. He worked for the Department of Ed, but he also was in private industry for many years. I don't want to see that. Hey, we, Ira and I have to have somebody to talk to on these broadcasts, right, Ira? <laughs> right. Absolutely. Oh, so, so, Ed, oh, yeah. go ahead. So, uh, what I'm just saying to you is this. Uh, it, it, companies need trained workers. They need to train them. Parents need their children healthy. Right now, we have lost basically a school year for most of these children. Mm -hmm. We have too many children going into the fourth grade who don't read at the fourth grade level. And that is terrible. And now we're going to have even a bigger number. Mm -hmm. E-learning is fine for kids, but blended is better. And uh, this is true for most elementary and secondary kids. It's true for a lot of college students and even adults. We need to get this behind us. And we need to collaborate and prove that like, this is a war. This is like the Second World War. 350,000 Americans died in the Second World War. We could have more people die in this war if we personally do not do something about it. I urge you, I urge you to mobilize your forces in your family, community, and business to take this seriously. So let, let's talk, let, let's hopefully leave everybody with a little bit more upbeat message sure. uh, and, and people will do that. What's the recovery look like? Um, obviously, if people do wear their masks, they we can get back to normal. Uh, the vaccine comes out maybe even a little bit earlier than we anticipated. What's recovery look like to you? The recovery looks like to me that if we do the right thing and we do collaborate and cooperate. We unlearn uh, some of our habits of not wearing a mask and relearn doing it as well as these other habits. Into next year, in the second half of next year, we should start seeing a dramatic improvement in the economy. But a large part of this rests with the action we take today and going forward, all right? And then, after that, in 2021, a large part of it rests with whether or not the thought leaders who basically are really preaching to you a revolution in changing behaviors and learning, both in the workplace, in schools, and at home, if we, if we take this seriously, if we take the fourth industrial revolution seriously, if we want America to again be the leader in the 21st century. And we can do it, we know how to do it. And I think we will do it. I see people across the country right now who I am talking to, who are planning to once again push forward once this, ep this pandemic ends. I think we can do it and I think more people will listen because I think this pandemic has unnerved a lot of us and we're ready now to change the status quo. And the status quo means that more people need to learn for life, to have a middle-class income. And uh, people talk a lot about uh, the unfair wage differences between blacks and whites, between the educated and uneducated. One way we can end this permanently is to make sure we offer better educational opportunities to our workers and to our children across the country. That's it. The status quo, I think, is now crumbling. And there's a lot of reasons to keep it up. A lot of people fear they'll lose power, prestige, money, etc. The new status quo includes all of them, plus more people. That's what America's all about. I'm an optimist. I've been born an optimist. My God, I've been in this business since I was 19 years old. 
My, I think about that. I was 68. Nixon was president. The war in Vietnam was going on. You talk about change. You talk about Watergate. You talk about all of the crises we have gone through as a nation since then. Can we win now? Can we win this war against this virus? And then can we win this war against ignorance and maintaining the status quo? The answer is yes, we can do it. It's already starting. We just got to make sure it gets enough heft so that systemically we see significant change over the next 10 years between now and 2030. Yes, mm -hmm. I think we can do it. And I intend with Ira and others to lead the charge doing it. And that's what we're going to talk about, not just today, but we'll talk about other aspects of this next month and the next Gordon report. And when we issue uh, Job Shock, which will uh, come out, I think, in February of next year, mm -hmm. and it's entitled uh, uh, Winning and Addressing the 2030 employment meltdown, because I don't intend to see a meltdown. I'm tired of writing books about this and having the people here, they're listening to me in HR and training. You pro you've heard this before and you, I hope, pick up some useful information you can still use in their, your business. But we need to make this broader now and get small business people, as well as parents mobilized behind this, this effort. And we can do it and we will do it. And I'm dedicated to do it. And I join with you. And if you have questions and comments, you see, uh, I, I, I hope that my uh, email has uh, come on here. It has it. Uh, uh, I will put it back up here again. It's not your it email, but right. you can go to imperialcorp.com. Yep. .com, that's, that's the uh, website. Mm -hmm. Email and it has an email on it, but the email is imperialcorp at juno, J U N O dot com. Or even call, uh, believe it or not, we do answer phones here, even though we get a lot of robo calls <laughs> at 312 664 5196. 312 664 5196. And go on our website, subscribe to the Gordon Report. There are a lot of other useful videos and information on there. And as part of the team uh, that helps communities, regions to reshape their workforce pipeline. Ira is part of that team. I'm proud that Ira and I have known each other now for a number of years and we have been fighting the same battle. And now with COVID, I think it's on the top of the heap. And I think after this election, more and more people will recognize the need to upgrade the education of the nation for adults as well as for students. So uh, I look forward to your emails, phone calls, smoke signals, letters. Of course, the letters take a while, but whatever you want to do. And uh, you see future work is behind me. Uh, you can get the updated paperback edition. We had two editions of that book. The latest one was 2018. I think you will find that book very useful because it has a lot of case study information and other demographic and background information on the skills job disconnect. But we are into solutions. I'm into an optimistic picture here of people who are willing to join together and collaborate in their communities. And Ira is one of the leaders of that movement. So uh, I guess, Ira, what do you have to say yeah. before we sign yeah. off today? Yeah. Now, Ed, thanks very much. Uh, again, this was our, our second live Gordon Report, other than a little technical glitch in the beginning. A right. uh, lot of good information uh, for anyone who is interested in catching these live in the future. Uh, you can uh, we normally do these the fourth Friday of each month, uh, which at noon Eastern time. Uh, but uh, the next two months, because the fourth Friday, hard to believe we're getting to that point of the year, uh, the fourth week in November would be Thanksgiving. So we're going to do it the week before. It'll be the third. 
uh, right. week uh, Friday. And the same thing, uh, actually, uh, Christmas and New Year's are on Fridays this year. Uh, so for the next two months, November and December, we'll be doing these live on uh, the third Friday at noon in November and December. And then we'll be back to our routine in January. Uh, for To do this, you can uh, subscribe to either Ed's newsletter. Uh, you can subscri subscribe to googleizationnation.com. Uh, and you'll get updates about this. Uh, also, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Facebook channel, uh, or connect with me on LinkedIn, you'll get notices and uh, you'll be able to set your a reminder for that. And if you miss them, uh, just go to YouTube, Facebook. Uh, the replays are there. What do we say? You can, also, <laughs> you can also contact us through yeah. LinkedIn the same way. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's also on our on my website, Success Performance Solutions. Uh, and uh, you'll, again, get notices about that. Uh, and just as a closure, uh, I, I hope you like my uh, my duct tape status quo uh, <laughs> image that we had up before, Ed. Uh, it sort of uh, came up with this idea. It's it's sort of what people are trying to do, just duct tape it together and hope, hope it sticks. It's not going to. Uh, I just want to display one other uh, one we came up with. Uh, and again, we're, we're leaving status quo. I know you said there's a new status quo and eventually we'll get there, but uh, we're moving to what many people have called new normal, normal 2.0, uh, future normal. Uh, there's yeah. a whole lot of terms, whatever yeah. it is, we need, we're, we're looking to find a bridge. And one of those ways is through the adaptability quotient. Part of the ad adaptability quotient is people's ability to unlearn. We talk about the ability to learn, but it's just as important to have the ability to unlearn. Uh, and again, so if you want to uh, learn more about that, you could go up to my website, Success Performance Solutions. We do have a master class coming up on that uh, beginning November 4th. You'll be joined by a few hundred, actually uh, 15 different groups from around the world. Uh, compare your results. Where are you? Uh, and if you want to learn more about what the adaptability quotient is, just go up again to my website, successperformancesolutions.com. I just interviewed the founders of a new organization that focused on this. Uh, they work with IBM, Singularity University, the UN, and many large organizations in taking science, uh, the science behind adaptability, and literally figuring out a way to measure our individual adaptability and a team's readiness for change. Um, again, we can teach people, but if they're not ready for to learn or ready to change, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so again, uh, we welcome you to do that. Uh, I'll, I'll just repeat what Ed said. Please stay safe. Use common sense. Um, keep Do social distancing. We're not telling you don't go to businesses, don't go to school, don't socialize. We're saying if you do it, do it smartly. Uh, very simply, just wear a mask or keep your distance. One, one of the two or both uh, is better. Until uh, November's Gordon Report, uh, going to sign off. Ed, thanks very much. Always insightful. And uh, take care, everyone. All right. Okay, that's it.